Hi, this is Catherine from LangChain. Today we'll show you how to create data sets for individual steps of an agent. When we're building agents, we often want to evaluate the individual components of the application. This can be thought of similarly as a concept of unit testing in software development. For example, it could be useful to evaluate whether a supervisor routes to an appropriate sub-agent or calls the correct tool. Building a good data sets for individual components in an application is therefore important. To properly do that, it's helpful to have full visibility into its decision-making process. By tracing the entire agent run, you can isolate and filter for the step that you want to iterate on. From there, you can add the input-output from the step to build a high-quality data set for evaluation. Now let's hop over to Langsmith to show a couple ways we can construct such a data set. I'll be using the traces from an application that our team has built called ChatLangChain as an illustration for this demo. ChatLangChain is built with the purpose of answering user questions that they may have about our product ecosystem by first generating relevant research steps, then fetching relevant documents from a vector store before outputting a consolidated answer. Let's hop into the traces view to see what that looks like. Let's click on this one about RAG right here. And let's say that after inspecting the results of this application, I now want to iterate on the last step, which currently takes in all the retrieved context and generates a response. I can select this sub run, click the button on the top right, and we can add it to a data set that we've created called chat link chain response step. From here, it automatically populates the inputs and outputs from the trace. And we can see that it has passed on all the retrieved contacts in the input, including the documents, as well as the response generated by the application as the output. I can also make edits to the output in this view that better reflect the ideal response that we want before submitting it to the data set. Let's click on this, and we can see that the subrun has been added as an example. Cool. Let's hop back to the tracing view. In addition to adding a subrun from a singular trace, we can also apply filtering in this view to select multiple traces. So in filtering, instead of looking at what root runs, I can filter for the name of our node, which is respond. I can combine this with additional metrics I care about. For example, where this step took a long time to run, and I can filter for latency over, let's say, 10 seconds. We also have an advanced filtering feature here that allow you to not just filter for properties associated with the individual components, but also have the filters overlaid with the properties of the overall trace. For example, I might want to take a closer look at the behaviors of my response step when I have a negative feedback score for my overall run. To do so, I've already clicked on advanced filtering here, and the traces filter denotes the filters that you can apply for the root runs. So here, I can select a feedback score. And we have already defined a feedback metric called health in its few shot, where a zero would denote a negative feedback. Once we apply this, only the subruns with negative feedback scores are shown. So this advanced filtering feature is quite unique and powerful because it gives me the flexibility now to combine a couple of metrics I care about and allow me to really focus on these examples. So now I can select all these subruns on this page and I can choose to either add it to a data set, which is a similar view to what we just saw, or add it to an annotation queue. Cool. The same filtering can be applied in rules as well. This will allow me to automate this process. So here in the filters, we can see that the same filters have been automatically ported from the tracing view. I can also denote a sampling rate and from there, I can choose to automatically add it to an annotation queue or to a data set. Then we will be able to run offline evaluations to focus on improving performance for specific components of an application once our data set is constructed.